Hello, everybody. So I'm Nicolas Crockfer. I'm here to talk about um, Celery, which is a, a task engine to orchestrate, to combine some tasks. Uh, we will talk also about Director, a tool we made in OVH to um, easily create this workflow. Okay? Uh, why we need to work with Celery? Uh, we will see that together. Uh, to be on the, the same base, we will see what is Celery, and I will make a quick demonstration, a very basic demonstration. And then we will see that in our team we had some custom needs. Uh, we need to execute some background task, but uh, some future provided by Vanilla Salary was that not enough for us. So we created a tool, Director, which is now open source uh, this, week, uh, this week. So you can try it right now. What is Salary? This is uh, the official description in the Salary documentation telling Salary is an asynchronous task queue based on distributed uh, message passing. Celery uh, supports real-time processing, but also periodic scheduling. What does it mean? In fact, the important words here are task queue. What is a task queue? In fact, it's really simple. It's just a mechanism used to um, execute some task in other matchings or threads. How to do that? When we are working about, when we are talking about uh, task queue, we are in fact talking about producers and consumers. On the middle of the screen, you have the queue. In Celery, a queue is named a broker, and the most common ones are RabbitMQ or Redis. Um, the idea is to uh, pass message from the, less, le the left of the screen, so from the producers, to the consumers. The idea is producer does not want to execute themselves the task. They want to make execute it by another system, another consumer. Okay? So just in summary, what is Celery? It's just a mechanism, a Python library, used to uh, execute task, a task, is, in fact, it's just Python code, somewhere else. And why to do that? Just some use cases. Um, for example, to not block the user, uh, if you are working in a web service and your user make a, a request on it, you don't want to block it. You want to execute a long-running task somewhere else and return a quick response right now. Uh, your producer cannot have enough resources to execute the task because it's a complicated task to do uh, involving some CPU bound, and you don't have, as a producer, uh, the resources to do it, but your workers can do it. You have big machines to do. We can also talk about network accesses. Uh, there is a lots of use cases when you want to use some salary uh, task. And here, uh, I will show you how to create tasks and workflows using salary. Just for that. This is uh, why, uh, what we, we will use uh, in this demonstration. Just remember there is uh, two parts, the producers and the consumers. Uh, to produce message, we are using the dot delay method. There is some other methods to send the message in the queue, but here we will go to use the delay method. And on the other side, we have the celery command providing sub, some subcommands and one of these same commands is the worker command. So we will produce message with this, and we will, I don't know if, uh, we, and we will consume message with that. First part of the demo will be just create simple task, and now we will see how to combine this task using some salary primitives, and we will see uh, the chain and the group primitives, okay? And this is the demo part and I hope it will work. <laughs> okay. Um, remember, I need to have a broker running, so I already installed a Redis instance. You can have a RabbitMQ. You can also have file system, so no, no running instance in need, but I prefer to use Redis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So I think it's over there, colors, and this one, no? Okay. 
<laughs> this was salary. Thank you. Do you have any questions? <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's start. Uh, I already installed my requirements, so I'm in the virtual environment, as you can see. Okay. And I will open Jupyter. Just here. Okay. Do you see? Okay, it's okay. I can do that. Okay. So I already created a task file named task.p containing all my Python code to execute somewhere else. How to do that? First thing to do is to, inst to import the salary class, of course, and create a salary application. If you already use a web framework like Flask, for example, you know you need to create an app application, a Flask application, and use it somewhere in your code. It's the same thing using Celery. I created my application. This is the name of this application, and I need to, to give it the connection to the broker. I also give it the connection to the back end, which is just here to store the task result. Okay? And here, I have two simple functions. Fun this function are really simple. It's not the important here to make some complicated code. I just wanted to show you how to send a task somewhere else. So we have a first function to use the to return a random number. And we have another function used to get first parameters, a list of numbers, and return the addition. Okay? This will be my producer. The notebook will be the producer. And I have to launch the consumer like this. Uh, is it, uh, like you said, as you can see, there is my task file. Okay? And I can launch it. Okay? As you can see, salary is launched and discovered my task. Because we transform this Python function into salary task using the decorator. Okay? So, first thing to do is to, of course, in the producer, import the function. And it's not because we um, transform a Python function into a salary task that we cannot execute it um, normally, like normal function, Python function. So here, okay, I already have my results, sorry. Oh, I can execute it normally. As you can see, a random number has been uh, executed. Oh, this is just the notebook, Python notebook. Uh, because I send it in the background. Okay, so if I did not stupid, please. Okay, no, it's okay. Now I can execute it in using the delay function. Using it, I will in fact send a task in the broker. I will not execute the task in the, in the producer. Instead of it, I will send it in the broker, and as I have a worker running, it will execute it. What I have in return is a nothing result object. Um, this is, in fact, a salary object telling me um, maybe the task is finished, maybe it is not, uh, but this object allows us to have the state of the task. Is it finished, is it pending, and so on. As you can see, my worker really executes the task. It was not my producer, it was my worker. And has I said we can use some uh, async result method, like the dot get method, to already have the result. Here we have nine, and it was the, the good number. Okay? It's just a simple task showing you how to send task and how to execute it somewhere else. Now we can use a salary primitive to combine this task and create some workflows. One simple workflow will be this one, a chain work workflow. This workflow, in fact, will execute some task in the right order. 
one after the other. Okay, we will see that. I have to import the chain canvas. Here I call one first task, the random task, and another task. As you can see, I'm using .si function. I'm not using .delay, why? Because here, I want to create a signature. I don't want to really send the task in the broker. And as you can see, I have my two tasks created. Nothing has happened here. It's still my notebook, sorry. Nothing has happened. But now I can really execute the, de the delay function uh, used to um, apply this task. And as you can see, my two tasks has been created, okay? I can get the result. Now, we'll be using the group canvas. This canvas allows me to uh, launch some tasks in parallel. As you can see now, I want to first one execute two tasks in parallel, and then retrieve this result, their result. How to do that? Using the dot s function. Dot s will take the result of my previous task. Dot s i does not take care about the result of the previous task. Here we can see that first we, we execute get run in parallel, and then we take the sum of this task. Okay? Still my notebook logs. We have an async result again, and our task has been executed in parallel using two pull worker, and the sum of these numbers has been taking, has been addition uh, by the get sum uh, function. And now I can take the result of uh, this canvas. Okay? Um, see, this is how to use celery. As you can see, it's really simple, but I think it's powerful to use it. Uh, because of the, this simple API. Um, is this my talk? Okay, this is it, I think. Is it okay? Okay, so we saw that. This is just um, in the file to have the code of the demonstration, okay? We will pass on that. Here we created the chain, we executed it. Have the result. Here we created the group, executed, and have the result. And okay. As you can see, celery is powerful, but suffers some problems for us in our team. One of them, it's, it's really difficult to see uh, the dependencies between the task and the workflow. So we wanted a tool allow you, allow, allows us to track the evolution of this task. Uh, maybe one task failed, but what task, and what other task cannot be handled because of this failure. It was complicated. We also wanted to execute them using some API call and not directly in the producers uh, like this notebook. We wanted to create workflow uh, using YAML format, so task has been created, of course, in Python, but uh, in a folder and in another way, in another uh, file, YAML file, we combine this task to create workflows, okay? We wanted to periodically execute some workflows. Celery allows you, by default, to periodically execute some tasks, but not a world workflow. And this is uh, in our to-do list. It's not yet provided in the, um, in the, the actual, the current version of uh, GitHub, but we want to retry a failed workflow had a specific task. For example, if uh, several uh, dozens of tasks succeeded and uh, the 12th task failed, we didn't want to uh, relaunch the whole workflow because we know that our tasks are idempotent. So we need to store the result of this task and then relaunch the workflow at the failed task because uh, we fixed the problem. Okay, so how to use director, and I think it's use it. The demo. So again, the installation is just pip install, celery director. 
here, pip install that. And doing it, you will have a new command named director. Up. First thing to do, I will check if I, okay. First thing to do is to create a workspace. So just remember, this tool will allow you to create, to easily create new uh, Celery project. It's a kind of framework above Celery. Director in it, and I will create a workflows workspace, for example. Okay, I have here. First thing to do is to, uh, as it's written, to set this environment variable. Okay, I can now go to it. And when you are doing it, you will see that there is a task folder containing an example. Okay, so here I just have to import the, import the, the task decorator, create a Python function, and decorate it, giving it some name. There is a simple example given to, to you by default, which is an extract transform load example, uh, just using some print, print uh, function. And you have the YAML file telling it, if you want to do this kind of simple workflow, you can do it using this, um, this uh, syntax, okay? Um, Celery needs to store the result of uh, the task in its own database to make the dependencies easier to display. So for that, first thing to do is to create a database. Here, I have a file. By default, it's using SQLite, but of course, uh, we recommend to use a more powerful database like PostgreSQL uh, or other. We are using SQL Alchemy. So. And now, I can list this example. Right now, I have this one. And I can execute it. So remember, I don't have to open a Python terminal. I don't have to open a producer and import the, the source code. I just have to use this key, this, um, this command. I give it some default payload. It will be an empty payload. In the next version, we may remove this uh, useless information, but if you want to say foobar, you can. All right, yes, it's director workflow one, sorry. And now the, the, the task has been uh, sent in the, uh, in the queue, so in the Redis. I can now open a worker to consume them. Oh, we didn't see anything, but okay. Task has been executed here, okay? It just print task. How to display them because it's still not useful. We can, not, we can now open this. Okay, okay. Okay, I will open it using this one. And we have the web UI telling you, okay, we are in a small format, so <laughs> screen is not really beautiful here, but we have our workflow and we can display the task executed, okay? It's director. If I have some time, then yes, I have it. I can show you a failed uh, execution. So the ID is, for example, to create an error file. So from director, import a task. I need to create my task, giving some args. This is the default signature of our and I can make an error, okay? I transform this one into task, give it a name. 
Okay. I think it's okay. And I can now open this one. So here I just copy past because I have my notebook used to help me. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think it's okay. It's okay. Yes. So here I created a new workflow named will fail containing several tasks. The first one will be the extract one and then we created a group containing several tasks. These tasks are a transform task will succeed and here we have our failed task will be failed because of the zero by uh, division by zero. And this task will not be executed, of course. But we will see that in the web UI. I can now execute it. Uh, name is will fail. No, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah. I can. Um, okay, re the worker. Of course. Uh, <laughs> The idea is to have several um, terminals, several shells, or several containers launching all of these functions. And now we can see that in the web server, which is just here, we have an error using, showing you the workflow, and we can see that our task failed here. Um, I don't have time to uh, execute Flower and show you um, the, the trust back, but if you are also using Flower, which is a well-known uh, tool in salary community, you can check here the complete trust back display you the division by zero. Today, in OVH, we are using this tool to manage our workflows and our task, and it's really easier to make it because, because we can use some web services to call our task. I show you here how to do that using uh, using uh, some CLI like this. But it's uh, so important to note that we can now execute a workflow using some uh, API call, using some post call. We also work to provide you a way to uh, execute a workflow directly in the web UI. And this is the result. And here, if you are uh, using Flower, you can display the, the, the complete trust back. More useful to make some investigation. And it's also, in, it's, um, it's finished for me. The tool has been open source this week. It's really fresh. Uh, you can try it and give, it, and give us some feedbacks if you want. Uh, installation is really easy, as you can see. So, Thank you for uh, your attention and uh, if you have some questions. <laughs>